Rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part 5. Please make sure you share and subscribe us. Account 1. My grandparents had an acreage when we were kids, with a cabin he had built way in the back as a sort of getaway spot for his grandchildren. It was a really nice secluded spot that looked over a field and took about five minutes to get on quad. On the summer of their 50th wedding anniversary, they had all their friends over, a group of people that spanned from all over North America to celebrate. Most of them had kids or grandkids who were around my age, 18 at the time, so we all stayed out in the cabin. It was a perfect location to party, smoke, and get into trouble for some rural punk kids. There were maybe seven or eight of us in total. Anyway, my one buddy and I stepped out for a smoke and it was fairly dark. This is in southern Manitoba, where around this time of the year it's not fully dark until about 11.30 p.m. I had a flashlight on me and was just generally messing around till I shined it to the left of me just off the porch. Bunch of eyes in the dark, coyotes. My buddy and I were both 200 LBs, 6'2 guys, so I wasn't too concerned, but we knew they were there. We went back in. Both of us had dealt with coyotes before, so this was nothing new but it always kind of made me uneasy knowing a bunch of scavenging predators were lurking around. An hour or so later, we go back out for another smoke and think, hey, I wonder if the coyotes are still out there. Check again. Holy shit, yes they are, but now they are in the field in front of the cabin and to the right side as well. We go back in and close the door, turn off the lights. We shine a light out the window and they're practically right there. As far as I could tell, the whole cabin was basically surrounded by the fuckers. We ended up calling it for the night, but the majority of us couldn't fit in the loft upstairs, so some of us slept downstairs. My buddy and I slept on the floor almost in front of the door, and you could hear the fuckers literally pacing on the front step outside the cabin. Lots of yipping too. Nothing really happened beyond that, and I'm sure they eventually moved on. Come morning, there were paw prints everywhere. I'm sure in retrospect, it was just a pack of coyotes curious as hell as to why there was a bunch of light and noise coming from a building that was usually abandoned, but good God, was it an unnerving night. Account 2. I have a lot of creepy stories in the woods of Spain and near my granddad's village. Some normal, some paranormal. As the threat is serious, I will stick to the normal ones. After a day of hiking, I started returning home almost dark, but we have a clear path marked with stones that reflect light as markers. Halfway there, the foxes had no better thing to do than start mating, so the woods were covered in what sounded like women being murdered. Suddenly everything became quiet, which normally indicates that wolves or bears are hunting. I stopped to drink a bit, as they tend to avoid people and even if they see you, they don't care most of the time when suddenly I noticed the breath of something almost touching my neck. I was so scared only thinking that I was stupid, and I just found the only man-eating bear in the country. I slowly turned to see it and stopped seeing my back, and there I saw it. A big adult bear sniffing at me. Thankfully, once it stopped sniffing, it went back into the dense woods. It was scary as fuck, I was probably safe as in swimming with sharks, but the creepiest thing is how a 200-kilo being sneaked on me with that ease. Account 3. I was getting over a two-year relationship breakup and drove out east into the country. My plan was to sit quietly away from the light pollution of the city and take in a grand star's cape in the dark, just to chill out. Well, a moment after I found a spot to park up at on the north side of the road on a grassy patch, shut off my car, the weirdest, creepiest thing to ever happen to me yet takes place. I rolled down the window and looked up at the sky in anticipation of a beautiful, clear night's starry vista, when all of a sudden the rear of my car feels like something is grabbing onto it and shaking the whole vehicle. I put the keys back into the ignition and fired her up and frantically rolled up my window. Before I drove away, I remember stopping for half a second and second-guessing, wondering if it had just been a ground tremor or something innocuous. But the feeling in my gut, like when you're in the presence of something supernatural and malevolent, was sharp. So I drove away with the quick quick. I've told a few people who were interested about it, but this is the first time I've felt I could post it. Account 4. When I worked on farms, I went for a sunset ride down a very isolated road in the country. Me and my horse were just heading back when she stops, her eyes go wide and she is looking into the wooded path next to us. 
I encourage her on, but when we move, something in the tree line moves with us, and when we stop, it stops. I am trying not to freak out at this point because the horse would freak out too, but I ended up getting her into a canter all the way home because she wouldn't walk. Account 5. I was driving home from the city one night at about 11.30 p.m. and decided to take a shortcut through the back roads to save some time. About halfway home I checked my fuel and it was reading less than a quarter tank. I think to myself, wait a second, alone, late at night, country back roads, running out of fuel, am I in a horror movie? And no shit. The second I finish the thought, the first splashes of rain start hitting my windscreen, to which I actually said out loud, well that's ominously conclusive. I laughed at getting the horror cliche bingo and continued home. Account 6. I'm from a small town in Appalachia, and my grandpa lived out in the relative boonies. I was home from college once in mid-autumn and went down to visit him. Ended up staying a while, and it was dark by the time I was going to take off and head back to mom's house. He walked me to the back door that had a little 8, 8, 10 or so porch off of it, and a set of stairs straight down to a concrete stoop with a single bulb outside light fixture that threw just enough light to see by. The driveway was probably 15 yards away, and since I had parked behind his car, it was maybe a total of 20 yards to my Jeep, 15 more beyond that to the woods. As soon as I hit the bottom step and took about two steps forward, something stopped me cold. It was almost a physical sensation. I took a look behind me and Grandpa had stepped out on the porch with his by-the-door shotgun pointed in the same general direction. I backed up the steps and he covered me until I got to the door and we shut and bolted it. I called Ma and said I was just gonna stay the night since it was late already. We sat up for hours trying to figure out what had tripped both of our oh shit meters at the same time, but could never come up with a satisfactory answer. Neither of us consciously saw or heard anything out of the ordinary, and neither are the type to get easily freaked out. He was a wubby y 2 Marine who fought all over the Pacific, and I'd been hunting and camping with him since I could walk. He said the only other time he'd had that feeling was during the war on Iwo Jima, before either a late-night Banzai charge or just before a sniper up in a palm tree took a shot. Account 7. Not too rural, but rural suburbs here. I'm still sitting here on my couch, post-witnessing a break-in attempt into my own home. I have a weird downstairs neighbor. I rent about two-thirds of the house, but there is a small ground-floor unit that's rented out to an older lady. She seemed perfectly nice at first, just old, a bit cookie and bored. Then we've received the news that she's been watching us, listening to us closely, and reporting everything back to the old tenant, who is an extremely toxic, <laughs> shitty person. Why? For something to do, I guess. We've had multiple problems with her since moving in less than a month ago. Violent fighting with her ex to the point we had to call the police to go check on her, reporting everything we do to the previous tenant, ringing and banging on my door relentlessly when the mail comes so I can come get mine. Like, yeah, I know the mail is there. Calling and texting multiple times a day to ask to borrow money for cigarettes. Smoking inside to the point I've had to use inhalers and allergy meds. A lot of shit. Yes, it's been reported to the landlord. They are looking for a reason to throw her out because she's been causing too much shit. Last night, she texted asking to borrow money for smokes. I didn't even reply, since she bugged me before, and the answer is still no. Then she called and hung up like three, five times. Still no. This morning around 8 a.m., banging, doorbell ringing, some more banging from her. Then swearing up and down how that lazy cunt sleeps all day, this will for sure show her. Thirty seconds later, heavy running steps up the stairs to my back door. I come out to see what it is. She's got a full toolbox next to her on my patio, trying to use whatever to break my screen and then patio door lock so she can come in and steal whatever. When I catch her in the act, she at first was all, I didn't hear you this morning, I thought you were sick and needed help. I told her I know that's a lie. Why doesn't she tell me what's really happening? She proceeds to call me every name in the world, telling me how I'm beyond spoiled, a 19-year-old who doesn't know what it's like to work for money. FYI, I'm 30 and I work from home. I've been on my own since 16. I don't understand not working for a living. I've always had to. Anyway, a few hours go by. It's around noon. I'm sitting on my couch reading a book. Suddenly, boom, 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 the sounds of heavy steps up my patio stairs again. 
She's again standing there with a bucket of tools trying to break in. I told her to leave now or I'm calling the police. More yelling, more name calling. I'm going to tell your husband everything. Just watch. So clearly I told my husband everything. He listened and asked only one question. Why haven't I called the police and the landlord yet? She's either very mentally ill or on whatever substance that's got her this intoxicated that she thinks she can break in and not even get yelled at. I have to stay alone in this house for the next four days while my husband and brother are away. I'm seriously scared. I've put a plank into my sliding door so you literally cannot slide it open. Same with my windows. But if she is this crazy, I don't know what her next move will be. Account 8. Once I was riding my four-wheeler with a friend high up in the mountains. I live in VT. My gas light came on, so we decided to drive straight down and not take the trail. We happened to stop a little ways down. There was a couple of inches of snow on the ground. Somehow, we noticed a pair of boot toes sticking up through the snow and then noticed the body. Frantically, we drove the rest of the way down the mountain and called the police. We had to drive them up to where the body was. They uncovered a man who had two guns in his hands and had shot himself. Then they had to strap the frozen body to the side by the side and travel back down. End of story. Account 9. I grew up in ruralish Illinois. But when I was 16, I was house-sitting for my aunt and uncle in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, about an hour and a half away from anyone I knew. Which was dumb of me because I was such an anxious kid, but they were paying me. I had all of the blinds and curtains tightly closed, so I wasn't creeped out by the desolate location corn as far as the eye could see. Around dusk, I was nearly positive I heard the back door jiggle, but convinced myself I had imagined it. I was popping popcorn, so I blamed it on that. An hour or so later, I heard very distinct whimpering outside. At first, I thought it was one of their cats, but then I realized it was more human, childlike. I started peeking through blinds and didn't see anything. At that point, I called my dad to try and get him to come out and stay with me. When I accepted the gig, he warned me that he wouldn't come to my rescue when I got too scared, so he told me I was psyching myself out and that I was safe. It wasn't long, though, before the whimpers turned into actual human cries, and to me it sounded like a little kid. I put on my brave pants and opened the sliding glass door blinds to see that a girl was lying on the patio furniture, crying. I quickly unlocked the door and flung it open, but as soon as she heard me, she jumped up and started banshee screaming while looking me dead in the eye. It turned out that she wasn't a girl. It was a grown but petite woman, maybe in her 50s, just staring at me and screaming at the top of her lungs. Obviously, I slammed the door shut again and locked it and sprinted into the kitchen to call the cops. This was before teenagers had cell phones, so I was relying on the landline. During that call, she began violently banging on the sliding glass door. I decided to hide in a lower kitchen cabinet, LOL dumb hiding spot, in case she got in. It was going to be a bit of a wait because the police station was about 30-ish minutes out. I had about a million anxiety attacks in that time, but after a few minutes, the banging had stopped and it was dead quiet. I also called my dad back and had him on the line while he drove. He was an early adopter of the cell phone, thank goodness, because the 911 operator said they couldn't let me tie up their lines and stay on the call with them until the cops arrived. A very lazy, disinterested police officer finally showed up, did a five-minute sweep of the property before saying there was no threat. Mind you, this was a massive farm operation with half a dozen outbuildings, a few sheds, acres of corn, and endless opportunities to hide. And this man took a single lap around the house, half-heartedly pointing his flashlight around. Luckily, he did agree to stay with me until my dad arrived. My dad showed up and told me to go to sleep, and he sat on the patio with a shotgun until sunrise. The next day, my dad and I and his shotgun poked around the property and found evidence that someone had been staying in a storage shed, but no sign of the woman. And there was no sign of the woman ever again after that. If it weren't for her little hidey hole in the shed, I almost feel like people would have thought I imagined it. This experience actually caused a huge falling out between my dad and his sister because they told me they needed me there as a house sitter to feed the cats and keep an eye on the chickens. But it later came out that they had a feeling that somebody had been nosing around their home and that's why they wanted a house sitter. They never found the woman. There was zero evidence that she was doing drugs on the property. That was our initial assumption and she could have been just nothing to point to that in the shed.
She was about four miles from the nearest home and 30 miles from town, a.k.a. a gas station, grocery store, and church, so they were unsure how she even got there in the first place. She absolutely terrified me, and I had literal trauma afterward and couldn't be alone, but I feel horrible for her because I can't begin to imagine the circumstances that led her to that night, and I worry about where she went afterward. Account 10. Man, I finally have something to share. I live in a small neighborhood in Iowa, but in this instance, I was staying at a cousin's house who pretty much lives in the middle of nowhere. Like, the closest neighbor was an hour away. I was around 13 when this happened. It was getting really late. My aunt and uncle had gone to bed, and I was sitting on the porch with my cousin. We were on the back porch, which looks out into the woods after quite a bit of field. The woods were close enough for us to see things walking in and out, so we were watching deer and other various critters moving around and talking about this movie we were excited to see the next day. They got super silent super fast like dead silence. The crickets stopped chirping, and even the breeze itself just went away. My cousin grabbed onto my arm and I looked over at her. She was just staring into the trees. So I looked with her. In the trees there was a guy just standing there. It was hard to make out the details of his face, but his jacket was all torn up. He was holding something, I think it was a rock or another heavy object, and just staring dead-eyed at us. Naturally, we sprinted back into the house and hid in her bed. The next morning, we decided to go check it out, and there was no sign anyone had been there. The grass wasn't flattened. There were no disturbances in anything around. It's to this day the second creepiest unexplainable event that I've witnessed. Account 11. I smelled something terrible near our barn and started walking around it and found a kitten head surrounded by its body that was all mush and fur. Then I found more spread throughout our barn in the exact same way. It's like one day they were just all suddenly there and it was absolutely heartbreaking. I still have zero idea what happened. And no, they weren't my kittens. I'm used to large dogs, coyotes, and even mountain lions around the ranch. This was not any of them. I was coming home around 2 a.m., and halfway into our valley, this enormous wolf-like creature walked off the side of the mountain into the road next to my car. Its body was pitch black, and its eyes shined white. I stepped on my gas so fucking fast. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Almost shit myself. Account 12. I've seen a ton of weird shit in the NJ Pine Barrens. Most recently, I found a very small fawn's head and foot while mountain biking. I assumed it was a coyote kill at first, but there were no other remains around, and they were positioned together in the center of the trail. I can only imagine that they were placed there on purpose. Account 13. I was sitting on my porch with my rabbit one night when I heard a noise in the woods It sounded big. I thought it might be a bear. It's nearly impossible to get into the woods in my backyard without someone seeing, and I stood up to see, and as soon as I stood up, it stopped. I sat down again, and a few seconds later I heard it again. I stood up, it stopped. This happened a couple more times, and I just went in. Another time, me and my mom were in our backyard, and this may sound weird, but it was 3 a.m. when we heard some whispering in the woods. We freaked out and started speed walking to the door, and to get to the door we had to walk all the way around the house, and this whispering noise followed us all the way there. We never saw anything, we just heard the whispering. This all really happened. Account 14. I used to live on 15 acres in the country with my husband and children. We lived at the end of a private gravel road and had a long, winding gravel driveway. Around 10 p.m. I'm getting ready for bed and I hear a car coming down the road. I go get my husband and we both start listening. It sounds like the car stopped, but we start to hear the gravel crunching. Someone is walking up our driveway. We are not expecting anyone and certainly not on foot. At this point, we head into the garage, and since it's pitch black outside, we can't see shit. My husband calls out to the person, but they don't respond. The crunching noise is getting louder as the person gets closer. My husband calls out again, and still no response. Just the sound of boots on the rocks. I find our big spotlight, and my husband shines it down the driveway. Finally, the man rounds the corner and comes into view. It was a fucking UPS man delivering a package. Account 15. Here in North Texas... A cryptid known as the Lake Worth Monster, or the Greer Island Goatman, is said to roam Greer Island and the surrounding area near Lake Worth. Although this story doesn't take place at the lake, it takes place by another close lake. 
I'm not going to share this specific lake for privacy reasons. Anyways, when we were kids, my cousin, 8M, lived by this lake, my sister, 10F, and I, 12M, as well as his other cousin, 13M, were invited over for the weekend. When we were over, we heard strange noises during the night, similar to an elk bugle. This was the loudest when my uncle drove us through the woodland on the shore. One night when staying up playing Animal Crossing, about 2012, New Leaf had just released, we heard these noises and looked out the window to see a gray, hairy, humanoid figure with horns and hooves standing on his neighbor's roof. Needless to say, this was the most terrified I had ever been. After this, we just hid in his room, closed all windows and blinds, then made a fort so we felt safer. We didn't get our aunt and uncle, though, because he had a baby brother that we did not want to disturb. After all, we thought the crying would attract it. 